Somebody turn me on. I'm on. Okay. Okay. Jesus, Jesus, thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you that you're going to teach us something amazing from your word. Lord, we love your word. We love it. We know that you put your word even above your name. Jesus. Now give everyone in this room the next level of faith to believe this book. This book is so freaking amazing. It's going to blow your minds today. I already shared this with Bob, so it won't blow his mind. <laughs> Bob, Bob walks with God so close, there's very little that can blow his mind, okay? Although he did hear the word from the Lord this morning, that he is to walk in faith in grace and mercy and then our brother got the word today Ron got the word confirmed the word that is awesome that is so awesome so I'm gonna go I could mess around with these other I just gotta take you to mark 11 mark 11 just come on this is this, this is gonna so so good you're gonna love this mark 11 I'll first read 12 through 14. You're all familiar with the story, but today it's going to be like you read it for the very first time. Well, maybe not for every, maybe not for Pastor Stephanie. She's, she's kind of head of, head of the game there, but you know, <laughs> she's got that secret weapon, you know, Holy Spirit. Okay, starting in verse 12, chapter 11. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if aptly he might find anything thereon. It means he thought there might be figs on there. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said to the fig tree, No man eat fruit of thee thereafter forever. And his disciples heard what he said. Have you ever noticed... That he didn't say to the tree, he answered the tree. He was expecting to hear something from that tree when he went to it. He was expecting there to be fruit, even though he knew, you know, being from the area, he knew that wasn't the season for figs. But see, Jesus has the right to demand fruit in season and out of season, does he not? He does. And he answered the tree. He answered the tree. It is threatening me right now to rain on my way back, and I have this precious cargo with me in a tiny tuna fish can car, and I'm telling you right now, I'm answering you, rain clouds. You're not going to rain on me on the way home, or sweat, or perspire, or any of that. We will not, we will not take it, no. And here's why. Rain, rain clouds, listen to this. Jump down to verse 21. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answered, said unto them, Have faith in God, that, what, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. If you believe it, when you say it, you will have it. Now, now back up to verse 23. I know, I know you didn't catch this, but we're going to right now. So you, you got this law that what you say you shall have. This is backed up. All through, by all through scriptures. What you say, you will have. Any, anybody doubt that? For verily I say, anybody catch that? If Jesus says it, is it going to happen? Amen. Therefore I say, I say, Ron, what you say is what you're going to get. Therefore I say what Betty says, she's going to get. I say, you see, he says it. Therefore, I say what you say you will get. Does Jesus lie? 
Jesus wrong? Does he ever not get what he says? Does he ever get any of his? Do, does, does the Father ever take Jesus' prayers and go, eh? Not that one, Jesus. No. No. All the promises are yes and amen in Christ, are they not? I just never saw that before. Y'all aren't freaked out like I was. I was like, whoa, Jesus said it, therefore it has to be, therefore they there. Do you understand, people, that there is no nature, the world, the mountain, it has no recourse. It has no, it has to answer to what you say. The problems that we brought here with us tonight, the burdens that we're all carrying, guess what? They have no choice because Jesus said, because Jesus said, Jesus said it. That's it. That's done. He told me that if I say it, I'm a whosoever. Are you all whosoever's here? Yes. Do you have to be special? No, you just have to be a whosoever. Whosoever. Who else? Whosoever. Because I said. Because he said it. It's law. There's no choice. So next time you say, mountain, be plucked out, cast into the sea. You better know the power behind that word. Jesus said it before you did. He said, Therefore, you say, and it's done. The mountain cannot argue back with you. It can't. Now, when we get this, we believe it, it will happen. Because James 1, 6 through 7, quickly, quickly, James, James. That's why we have ribbons. Tam, that's why we have ribbons. James. James 1, 6 through 7, you know this one too. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. See, it's never God's problem. Whatever you've been praying for and you're not seeing the answers to, it is not congestion with God. It is not high traffic time with God. It is always, yes. What's the contingency? It not, has nothing to do with God. He's, he's there. He's done it. He can't send Jesus again. He already did it. You will only receive it if you believe it. So don't let, if you're doubting, if you're like, well, I've got my doctor's opinion here, and I've got, I've got you know, the word of God here. Hmm. Then you're wavering on two different opinions. Yeah, it's a tough word, I know. I'm talking to myself included. But that is where we're going, people. This is where we're going. We're going to, say, we're going to get there. I'm bringing you with me. There ain't even nobody behind. And I will agree, we're not there yet, but we're going there. We might be looking like this right now, but pretty soon we're going to be a one-armed man. We're going to be like, God only. God only. God. Not like the widow, not like the, uh, that woman in, in Matthew, who just gave up all of her wealth and all, every resource she had and went to every doctor and every person and every shrink and tried to get her healing. And for 12 years, she suffered so much loss, not to mention the, the loss of community because she couldn't be out. She couldn't be around people. She couldn't even go to church. She couldn't do nothing. She couldn't go shopping. This woman suffered for 12 years before she finally cut that arm off says, God only. Let's learn a lesson from her. Let's just do God only. Make that the first choice. Now, if we ever get there, think of it. And I believe this will be the first church in, in this area that gets there, except for us on Tuesdays. <laughs> We're going to get there ahead of the game. We're clued in. We're the one-armed bandits. That's what we are. We're like taking our blessing. And we ain't, saying, we ain't taking a no for an answer. You know what? You can talk to God that way. I need this God, and here's what your word says. So many people in here, the Lord told me, are hanging on to verses in the scriptures, and they're not seeing the fulfillment. They're not seeing the answer because they're hanging on to the problem and the scripture thinking, what can I do to help? But then here's the scripture. It's like, let that thing go. Put that down at Jesus' feet and grab a hold of the word. Stand on that word because here's what the word is. This, See, God, when he's talking to us in Scripture, he's talking to us in a particular kind of language, all the way from Genesis to Revelation. He's talking to us in a particular language, and that is a tribal language. Now, tribal language, it has tribes make, you know, peace treaties. Uh, tribes 
make covenants with one another, okay? They don't take these things lightly. These are blood covenants. That's what the scriptures are based on, a blood covenant that God made with Abraham. So when you, when you have a blood covenant, it looks like this. <clears throat> You're, David's the leader of a tribe. Stephanie's the leader of another tribe. They come together, and, and they, you know, cut their hands, and they swear blood, brother. You know, here's what's going to happen as when I, when I covenant with you, when I covenant in partnership with you, Stephanie, David's like, Stephanie, I've got your back. I will defend you. I will fight for you. If you run out of money, I'm going to have it for you. I will beg, borrow, and steal for you, whatever it takes to keep you and your family afloat. I will make sure that your sons and daughters are protected. I will make sure that your house is protected. I will make sure that, that everything that concerns you is protected, and I won't let anyone take advantage of you. And if they try, they got to come to, they got to cross over my dead body before they can touch you. But, David says, but if you cross me, if you cross this blood covenant, I will burn your house down. <laughs> I will, I will take, yeah, yeah, this is tribal language. It's strong. It ain't, it ain't like nicey-nicey. It's very strong. It's, this is what you have to expect from me if you don't hold your end of this bargain. Okay, I will cut you to pieces. I will, I will destroy everything you have. I will make sure your name is mud in this community. You see, this is tribal language. So when we're talking to God, and we're talking about this covenant, this blood covenant that we have with our Lord Jesus Christ, that he paid such a high price for, and said under this covenant, you get X, Y, Z, W, K, M, L, and then your part of the bargain is, there is a part, there is for you. There's something for you. You've got to stand on that word of that testament. Lord, I've got this agreement here. Your word says, by your stripes I'm healed. Now I'm your daughter. It ain't right for me not to be sick. Because your word says that I'm healed. It ain't right. I'm reminding you what you said. I'm reminding you this is our covenant. This is our agreement. I'm standing on this. I'm not backing down. I won't take no for an answer because I know what it says. And I'm holding you to it. You can talk to God that way. Because he understands tribal language. He understands covenant. This world takes covenant for granted. Like, like you get married one day, you're divorced the next. You know, nobody takes commitment seriously. Not in our world. But you go over to Africa, they sure do. Remember Jonathan Livingston, how he went to Africa, and this guy uh, goes with him and says, here, I'll help you, you know, make peace with the chief tribe of this, of this area, you know, several tribes, but there's this one guy that he's like the head of all of them. Well, I'll go introduce you to him. He did. He was a language interpreter and all that. And he says, okay, we're going to make us a blood covenant. They made the blood covenant, and the chief wanted him to drink the blood. And uh, he's like, oh, I don't think I'm going to do that. You know? And then the guy that was the interpreter says, okay, I'll do it on your behalf. And he did it. He says, okay. And so the chief, after they make this covenant, the chief says, okay, I want your goat. Well, Brother Livingston, he's like, well, no. That's my goat. I can only drink goat's milk. I'm allergic to all the other milk, and I need my goat. And the interpreter says, you better give him the goat. So he's like, oh, gives him the goat. The chief gives him this little stick with some gold paint on it. And I got a stick for my goat? I don't seem right. Oh, well. So they go along making their way through their adventure there, and they run into a tribe, comes after them and starts to attack them. Yeah, suddenly they see the stick. <laughs> And they're like, oh, no, 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 we're bowing down to you. What do you need? We bow down to you. You see, this is the covenant you have with God. You got the blood of Jesus. Satan, no, this is a no-fly zone. We got the blood of Jesus. You can't talk to my, to my brother Ron that way. He's my brother. You get off of him now in the name of Jesus. We have covenant. He's my covenant brother in Christ. See, we are accountable to God and to each other. I'll just drive you home with this, Proverbs 18. You all know this one too, Proverbs 18. But just to, just to kind of drive home the point, how we need to get with our words. We need to be serious about our words. We need to take this word very, very seriously. Very seriously. I will not ever stop talking about this because there's so many unbelieving believers out there. And this word is like, well, if it, 
it's like they think of this as like a pragmatic book. If it works, okay, I'll, I'll believe it. If it doesn't, then mm -mm, I'm going to go do something else. See, that's what led Israel into idolatry. How could a people that saw the Red Sea part and saw the walls of Jericho come down and saw all these miracles of food and provision through the desert, how could they go against their God? It was because, well, I have a little trouble growing tomatoes. I'm really, you know, a shepherd. I don't really know much about growing tomatoes. So this pagan comes over and says, oh, well, you just give your firstborn, you know, to Molech, and then you'll have great tomatoes. Oh, I can't do that. I serve Jehovah. Oh, no, you, you don't have to stop serving Jehovah. You just keep serving Jehovah, but you just give your, your, your offering to Molech, and then you, then you got it got the best of both worlds. And see, that's, that's the problem with Christians say we're, we're trying to hang on to the best of both worlds. You know? And God's like, let it go. Let it go. Trust me. I know I'm going off on a rabbit trail here, but Andrew Walmack has the most profound um, testimony. He has many, many profound testimonies that you can go watch for free on his website or on YouTube. But there's this one that stands out because it's so graphic. And it's this man who is diagnosed with cancer. He's going to church and while he's sitting in church, he gets convicted that he's not believing on the scripture in First Peter. It says that by his stripes I'm healed. So he goes home, he stops seeing the doctor, he tells his wife, either the word is right or I'm just going to die. I'm putting my life on the word. So he goes and he goes home and this tumor, and they have pictures, it gets really big. And it's pussy and it's oozing and it's gross. And he's feeling weaker and weaker. But every day he's declaring, by your stripes I'm healed, by your stripes I'm healed, by your stripes I'm healed. Until one day it starts to shrink. And over the course of about nine months, that thing finally shrunk down and fell off. And he's perfectly fine. He decided one day, this word is, this word is my medicine. This word is true. Above and beyond what I'm seeing with my natural eyes, this word is true. And once he decided to take a gamble on God, he got his miracle. So Proverbs 18, verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power, say it with me, of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen, people, your words are so, so important. Don't use them loosely. God says in his word that we will be held accountable for every idle word. Right. Words are so, so important. Don't go around saying, well, it's that flu season. I guess I'll get it. I always get it. No, scratch that. <laughs> I ain't going to get it cancel that assignment. I'm not going to get it. I've got this, the power that raised Jesus from the dead in me. You think a little virus is going to catch up to me? No way in hell is that going to happen. I got the word. I got the word. I remember when Andrew Walmart first started preaching on the importance of your words and of healing and the believing the scriptures. And everybody thought he was nuts. You know, his church went down to just him and two other people, his wife and two other people. That was it. But he kept saying it and he kept preaching it and once he started preaching he actually started getting sicker and sicker and sicker you know this you're watching this happen right in front of you and he was literally he couldn't sleep with his wife because the coughing was so severe and this went on for months and he's still up there on the platform like <coughs> is this my stripes you're healed <coughs> you know he's just so sick one night He's in the living room because he can't be in the bedroom because of the coughing. And so he's on the floor. He can't even stand up. And he's got his Bible open on the floor. And he's saying, Lord, your word says, your word says, your word says. And by the morning, he was completely healed. Woo! See, both Satan and God are waiting to see if you are serious about this. Because you have let so much garbage fly out of our mind too. I'm not, blaming, I'm not pointing the finger, I'm pointing at me too. Look at this. Father, Son, Holy Spirit pointing right back at me. We have said things. We have said stuff against ourselves so that when we say this word, the devil's like, well, I don't think she really believes that because yet last week she said that uh, 
that she was going to um, die if she didn't have some ice cream. You know, like, <laughs> you know. So I don't think she really believes. And then God also wants to know, do you really believe? It's right here. I'm giving it to you. But you can't receive it because you don't really believe I'm that good. God is that good, folks. He is absolutely good. See me afterwards if you don't think so. A lot of people have judged God based on the Old Testament. Oh, it's not the same God as the New Testament. Well, yes, it is. That's another rabbit trail. Well, we all need to eat tonight, so I'm not going to go there. But he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and he loves us. His thoughts and plans for us are good all the time. That's back in the Old Testament. Jeremiah, my thoughts for you, my plans for you, to give you what? A, my plans for you are to give you a future and a hope, right? Same God, same God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen him. Same God, same God, Elohim, the Father. So he is good, he is absolutely good. And when I say absolutely good, I mean there is no room in him for evil, none whatsoever. Do you know that he cannot lie? That's the one thing he cannot do. For God, all things are possible, yes, but not lying. So when you read it in this book, you have to know it is not a lie. If Jesus prayed it, he got the answer, yes. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, watch your words. Live by your words, because you will eat the fruit of those words. And then, you know, this epiphany in Matthew, speaking back to the tree, oh, that was priceless. But then when Jesus said, therefore I say, he's like, watch this, watch this. He's like, Peter, John, what you say you will have, now watch this. I say, you get to have what you say. Love it. Gotta love him! Woo, Jesus!